Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at evolution by natural selection, the process of evolution, and then we'll finish with a summary. So natural selection is one of the important forces that drives evolution. Um, as we've already said in the previous video, variation exists within and between all species, and even within a particular species we see subtle variations between all organisms. And this is because of difference from both genetics of an organism and the environment in which they grow up. So there are many, many factors which can be different. For example, you just have to look at a group of humans to see differences in things like height, hair colour, skin tone, voice, everything about us. But despite particular variations, most organisms and most species are suited to their way of life. For example, if we look at a type of shark, like a hammerhead shark, we can see that it's adapted for the environment that it lives in. It's adapted to live underwater. It has gills to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide with the water. It has a streamlined body to swim very fast. And it has particular other features which we could go into in a lot more detail. And similarly, birds, for example, are lightweight. They have feathers to fly. They have beaks to hunt and find things like nuts and find insects in the ground. So overall, when you look at a species, you can see how through time it's become adapted to live in its particular environment. And the way that it does this is through evolutions. But we also know that if it's all driven by genetic mutations, if these are random and the environmental conditions can change very quickly and dramatically, how are organisms so well suited to their environment? Species have evolved to basically survive in the face of life-threatening challenges or conditions, and the process by which they evolve is through natural selection. We'll talk about this and use examples of how species are forced into evolving to adapt to their environment rather than just dying off and not changing. So natural selection is the mechanism of evolution explaining how certain features of the environment can apply a selective force on the reproduction of individuals within a population. So this seems quite long-winded and we'll go through this in more detail. But natural selection drives evolution as a mechanism. And basically it's showing how certain features and challenges in the environment, what we call a selective force. So this means that the challenges only allow those capable to adapt to survive through and those that do survive are able to reproduce, pass their genes on, and therefore that gene will become more common. And we'll go through this process in more detail. So the process can be divided into about six separate steps. So within a population, for example, a population of humans, some people have genetic mutations, and over time, genetic mutations get spread out and they can be very random. And because of these mutations, different genes have multiple versions or alleles of genes within a population. So some people have particular combinations of alleles, others have other combinations. And because there are so many different genes, the combinations are pretty much infinite. And so there are many variations between us in a population. Genetic variation within a population creates intraspecific competition. So we're using humans as an example, and we're all part of the same species. But within us, we have variations in our alleles. And so this is intraspecific competition. And when we say competition, it's because we have certain features that are better than others. Some people are better at running, some people are better at finding food, etc, etc. So it's intraspecific competition. The people with the alleles that are particularly suited for survival or facing particular threats and challenges are going to be found in the population where there are other people who have worse off alleles. So for example, humans used to live in the African environment where they used to be predators or predation. And obviously those that had better alleles for running, like longer legs, bigger muscles, perhaps they were taller, would have more of a chance at running away from this predator than others. So for the sake of this, let's say that the orange, the blue, and the red types of people tend to have better alleles for evading predators. And obviously many alleles that code for something like running or eyesight are controlled by many different genes, but we're keeping it simple here, just talking about one allele. So those ones with the advantageous alleles, or the advantageous characteristics, are more likely to survive than the individuals without this characteristics. So if the predators are sort of spreading through Africa and picking humans off and eating them, then those that have the allele that's more successful are more likely to run away and survive, and those without are more likely to end up dying and not making it. So the individuals that end up surviving are able to then reproduce and pass their advantageous genes on to the next generation. So let's assume that the orange, blue, purple and red ones had those advantageous alleles in order to run away from the predators. 
because they're able to survive and are more likely to survive, they're more likely to then reproduce, get the opportunity to reproduce, and then pass their genes on to the offspring. For those that didn't have the advantageous alleles, they likely died off and never got the opportunity to reproduce. This might not be the case for every time because by chance some things will happen. For example, some of them may just happen not to meet a predator, or some of them may have reproduced before they met the predator. But the likelihood is that this would happen more often than they would pass their genes on. Over time, those that survive tend to outweigh those that don't, and therefore the general population will have a higher proportion of individuals with those advantageous characteristics. And hopefully you begin to see that as this is repeated through generation after generation after generation, where evolution can take thousands and millions of years, this trait, as in being a good runner, will become a trait among all humans, and we are designed to run by the structure of our body. So this is how a particular characteristic gets selected for, and when we look at species now, their adaptability to their environment is the result of thousands or millions of years of those who have those traits surviving and passing the genes on, and those that didn't dying off, unfortunately. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.